Today we're going to take a look at how to expose Cine4 correctly on your Sony camera. Hey what's up guys, this is Marcos and before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and do so right now because I'm dropping videos like this every week and you don't want to miss it. All right, uh, Sony cameras, uh, I used to shoot S-Log2 most of the time, actually these videos I shoot in S-Log2, but when I'm outside, I had to switch and I'll tell you why. Um, I used to shoot all ACC, ACC 300s. I can't even really say that. A6300s. Uh, but recently I bought this A7S2 and I've been using it. But um, as you know, or you may not know, the minimum ISO on the Sony A7S2 with S Log 2 is 1600, which is terribly high. I mean, it's pretty high. So you really have to crank up the, the shutter unless you have an ND filter. Now, I don't shoot with ND filters, so I thought I have to switch because I can't shoot S-Log2 outside anymore. So I, I started experimenting with different picture profiles and I finally landed on Cine4, which I really liked. Cine4 Pro, that's what I go with. So Cine4 Pro, what's nice is that the minimum ISO is 200. So that's pretty good. Uh, so the next thing is trying to actually nail exposure with Cine4 because um, actually I get hired by other wedding videographers and they shoot in Cine2, Cine4 mostly, Cine2 and Cine4 which are very similar exposure wise. Uh, so one of the things they told me is, hey Marcos, you're kind of underexposing. And you know, the reason for that I make mistakes is because with, uh, with those picture profiles, the highlights are not very forgiving. If you blow out the skin, the, the highlights on the skin, it's really hard to recover them. With S-Log2, I remember, uh, you can overexpose a little bit, it's actually a good thing, and you can still recover highlights, but not with these other picture profiles. So I think that's why I started to err on the side of underexposing because you can bring up the shadows and the midtones, but you can't recover highlights. So that was my, uh, my explanation for that. I mean, I'm still trying to perfect the exposure, especially when you're going on a run and gun shoot like a wedding. It, you know, it's a challenge to get to nail the exposure. So that's just why I started experimenting and this is why I'm making this video, making this as much for you as it is for me. All right, so next thing, what do you actually need? Well, let's start with using a grade card. I have one right here. Uh, let me bring this in here. Let's say you're in a controlled environment. Uh, I'm gonna show you this one first, and then when you're in a run and gun situation, I'm gonna tie it together, so hold on. So you wanna, if you can, try to get a grade card. This is an 18% grade card. I have a link in the description if you wanna get something like this. So what you, what you wanna do is you wanna put this where your face would be, and I have a clamp with a stand. And what I do is just, I set it here, and then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna run over to my camera, and I'm gonna set, Turn on the C brush. You can do this with all, mostly all the Sony cameras. And you want to set the IRV, IRE value with C brush to 40 plus or minus five. Now you set it the metering mode to spot and you set it on this gray card. You want to make sure that you start seeing some C brush around uh, the 40 IRE mark. So you change the exposure uh, depending on, basically <laughs> you want to see C brush in the gray card. That the next thing you want to check for is the exposure value. You want to set it to to sit somewhere around negative 0.7 to negative one. That tells you you got the now you pretty much nailed the exposure. So once you have that, you can take out the gray card and actually before that, turn on change the zebras from 40 plus or minus five, change it to 65 plus or minus five. And I'll show you why in a little bit. So now that I, we have that set to 65 plus or minus five IRE, now I'm gonna take out this gray card and I'm gonna step inside the, in the frame. And as you can see, there's just minor highlights right here in my cheekbone. I don't want to be above 65 or, or to have a lot of uh, highlights or zebras in my face because that means that I'm gonna start overblowing my highlights. Uh, that's what I've found. If you start seeing a lot of zebras in your face and you have it set to 65 plus or minus five, then you're gonna run into trouble with recovering the highlights. So I would suggest that if you can, try to not see any zebras at all. If you can, I always try to err on the side of underexposing. But that's up to you. If you wanna push it, then uh, if you just see a little bit of zebras in your face, uh, that tells you you're fine, okay? 
So that's it. <laughs> now from here on, I'm gonna leave my zebras on to 65 plus or minus. I wanna make sure I don't see a lot in the face because that tells me, hey, I'm overexposing. All right, that does it for today's video. Hopefully you found this useful. And if you have any questions, comments, anything I wasn't clear about, please let me know down below in the comment section. As always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Like this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one.